Okay, in this video, I'm going to briefly overview the procedure sections of Lab 2. Let's open up the first one. In the first one, you're going to learn how to calculate length of day using Stellarium. So we're going to do a particular example. We're again going to select Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and we're going to measure the length of day for the first day of summer, the summer solstice. And we show you how to do this in this tutorial, and then we repeat the instructions here. You'll do this in two parts. First, you'll measure the time of sunrise, convert that to decimal hours, so take the minutes and divide by 60, and add that to the hours, and that goes here. And then you're going to measure the time of sunset, again in decimal hours and on a 24-hour clock. So to calculate the length of day, you then just take the sunset time and subtract from that the sunrise time, and that's your length of day in hours. Now the true value for Chapel Hill on the first day of summer is 14.6 hours, so you'll calculate your percent error here, and then discuss significant sources of error. Once you've learned how to do this for one location and one season, you're then going to pick five different locations. One near, but just a little bit south of the Arctic Circle. One somewhere in the middle of the Northern Hemisphere. You can reuse Chapel Hill if you want. One near the equator, one in the middle of the Southern Hemisphere, and one near but at least a few degrees above the Antarctic Circle. Once you've selected these locations, you'll want to list them in Table 1 here, and it's very important that you list them from north to south, else the auto grading will get screwed up and you'll lose a lot of points. Now, you want to use Stellarium to look up the latitude of each of these cities, and you list those here. And you may have some difficulty finding a city or a location just a few degrees north of the Antarctic Circle. So one option you have available to you is to add a location, and I walk you through the procedure for doing this here for the example of Bisco Island, Antarctica. You open up the location window, you click on its approximate location. You can then correct that location by typing in these numbers in the latitude and longitude boxes. You want to name it Bisco Island and set the country to Antarctica. And then you add it to the list. And then it will be in your database. After this, you'll measure the length of day for each of your five locations for Northern Hemisphere Summer Solstice, Northern Hemisphere Winter Solstice, Northern Hemisphere Vernal Equinox, and Northern Hemisphere Autumnal Equinox. And you'll do this just as you did with your practice example of Chapel Hill, North Carolina, by measuring the sunrise time and entering it here in decimal hours, the sunset time, again in decimal hours, and then subtracting the two to get the length of day. Now with the vernal and autumnal equinoxes, you may be able to guess the answer, but you still have to carry out the measurements to verify your hypothesis. After that, there's an honor code pledge where you enter your name to attest to the fact that you collected these data yourself, and then you're going to plot your results. You go to this website, which is our custom graphing application. And there's a tutorial here to show you how to use it. Once you've plotted your data, you'll download it as a PNG file and upload it to WebAssign here. And then you'll discuss what you've plotted in your graph. You'll discuss how length of day varies with latitude for each of the four seasons in your graph. Okay. Let's move on to part B. Part A 
dealt with length of day. Part B will deal with the sun's angle above the horizon at midday, how high the sun gets in the sky. And this is important because it determines the directness of the illumination. For example, let's say this is the sun, and the wall back here is the ground. The sun is high in the sky, that light is very concentrated. If you're within this region, you have a lot of energy per unit area. But if the sun is low in the sky, the light is spread out over a much larger area. So if you're within that area, you have less energy per unit area, and so that would be a slower heating. So how hot it gets depends on how high the sun is in the sky, and we tend to measure this at midday. So again, we'll begin with an example. We'll again take the case of Chapel Hill on the summer solstice, and you'll go to this tutorial to learn how to measure how high the sun gets in the sky at this location, at this time of year, at midday, using Stellarium. And we then repeat the directions here. And once you've made your measurement, round it off to the nearest degree and enter it here. Now that you know how to do this, we're again going to select multiple locations, this time all in the Northern Hemisphere. The first will be the North Pole. Then you'll select a location near the Arctic Circle, above or below, a location between the Arctic Circle and the Tropic of Cancer, for example, Chapel Hill, and a location near the Tropic of Cancer. And you can reuse cities from previously in the lab. Once you've selected your locations, you'll record them in data table two here. And using Stellarium, you'll look up their latitudes and enter them here. Again, you must list the cities from north to south or else the auto grading will get messed up and you'll lose a lot of points. Now, the North Pole is not in Stellarium's database, but you can simulate it simply by entering 90 degrees in the latitude box and then clicking off of the box to activate it. So as before, we're going to make our measurements for all of our locations and all four seasons. You do not have to measure this for the North Pole during Northern Hemisphere winter solstice. The sun never gets above the ground. In that case, you're going to want to use negative 23 degrees. Again, we have an honor code pledge. And then you go to the graphing website and graph your results, download it to your computer, then upload it to WebAssign here. And then you'll describe what you found. You'll discuss how the height of the sun in the sky at midday varies with latitude for all four seasons that you measured. There's a follow-up question. How would these results differ if we had used southern hemisphere locations instead of northern hemisphere locations? Okay, on to the final part of the lab. So in this section, we'll use what we just learned to measure the circumference and hence the diameter, the size of our planet. And this will then serve as the basis of the cosmic distance ladder in the labs ahead. So to do this, imagine a road trip on a relatively straight shot of road and on a road that runs north-south. So you can drive from one location to the next and you can measure that distance using your car's trip odometer. Now you haven't driven completely around the globe, just a fraction of it, but with a little bit of geometry, we can extrapolate and determine the circumference of the entire globe. Now, this is a geometry that we're going to see time and time again in the labs ahead. And that is, if you cover a certain distance on the outside of the circle, 
It's the same as covering a certain angle going around the circle. This angle as a fraction of 360 degrees is the same as this distance as a fraction of the circumference of this circle. And that's what we have written here. The angular separation divided by 360 degrees is equal to, in this case, the distance traveled divided by the circumference of the Earth. You can solve this equation for circumference, and that's given here. So now let's consider a specific example. Let's consider a road trip from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada to Omaha, Nebraska in the United States. This is a relatively straight shot of road and it runs for the most part north-south. So the first thing we need is the distance between those two locations. And you would measure this from your car's trip odometer, but I don't expect you to go out and actually do this road trip. Instead, go to Google Maps and look up how long this trip would be if you drove it. Make sure you get that in kilometers, not miles, and put that in this box here. Then the only other thing you need is the angular separation. And what that angular separation is, is the difference in their latitudes. And you can measure this difference by measuring how high the sun is in the sky at midday at each of these locations. The difference between those angles, angle one here and angle two here, is the same as the difference in latitude. So using Stellarium, measure how high the sun is in the sky at midday. You can pick any season, measure it for Winnipeg, and then again, measure it for Omaha. Enter those two numbers here, enter the difference here, and then using this equation, calculate the circumference of the planet. Enter that here, show your work here, and then take the circumference and divide by pi, and you'll have the diameter of the planet. Now the true diameter of Earth is 12,742 kilometers, so you can calculate your percent error here, and discuss significant sources of error here. Lastly, I want you to summarize this process and take it one step further. So discuss how you would measure Earth's diameter using nothing but a shadow casting stick, a protractor to measure angles, again, a car's trip odometer. If you're on a road trip between two cities that are on a north-south straight shot of road, and in particular, consider how would you know that it's midday using the shadow casting stick and the protractor. Okay, that's it for this video.